I'm actually so lazy. I really should clean up here in the office, but since I'm only back for a couple of days from the vacation, I haven't really cleaned anything else up other than what you see right now. So this, like, this looks like a, yeah, it looks bad. So if you haven't seen my video on the Sony a7S III that I just dropped, then I highly recommend you check that out. Before you watch this video, I'm gonna put a link right here so you can just go there and see what the camera has to offer. Now, there's so much to talk about about these cameras, so I thought I'd make a separate video with my thoughts on the a7S III versus the a7S III and a7R III. So, let's dive into it. I've been using the a7R III for, I think, around two and a half years now, or maybe like three years now that I think about it, and the a7S III, I bought in 2018 during the fall. And both cameras are fantastically good. I've been doing a lot of things with these cameras. I've been shooting epic photos, epic videos, super cool B-rolls that you probably have seen, like the poker B-roll, we've been shooting Aftermath, we've been shooting a bunch of different things with those cameras. So one of the main things that I've really enjoyed with the a7 III and a7R III is that whenever I've been editing 4K footage on my computer, it has been like going blazingly fast, no lag, no nothing, and I never had to worry about like having to let things render before I actually could edit the video. But now that I've been shooting with the A7S III, my computer <laughs> is having a lot of issues trying to like chug through all the footage and data, data, data that you're getting with this camera. And I have a fully spec'd out MacBook Pro, and this is making that MacBook Pro look like it's an old computer. And that is an issue that I did not have with the a7 III and a7R III because the compression and file sizes when you were shooting 4K or 1080 was not that big and you still got the ability to get some really high quality footage out of these cameras even though the compression was really low. And when you're about to buy a camera, that is something that you have to take into consideration because, for example, the a7R III, when you're taking photos, like those photos are gonna be like 82 megabytes per piece when you're shooting uncompressed RAW, and that is taking up a lot of memory space. If you compare it to the a7 III, which is gonna provide you with, I think it's like 42 megapixels, 42 megapixels, 42 megabytes per shot. And when you have those kind of like big file sizes that you need to store, something that will cost you a lot of money is going to be the storage space. And if you were working with video especially, then you wanna make sure that you have fast hard drives that you can edit from or that you can store your footage on. On, and I am personally using SSD drives such as the Western Digital SSDs or the Samsung T1 SSDs to use as my like daily drivers and whenever I'm having like big projects there's a bunch of footage that I need to save and there's like not gonna be possible to have only one drive then I have to have more drives and now with a7s3 I realized that it's going to take up a lot of space and the entire Final Cut Pro project, together with all the files that I had for the A7S III hands-on video, took up one terabyte of storage alone. Like that, that is such an insane amount of storage that I needed to have to be able to make that video happen. And I actually had to go out and buy a new hard drive to be able to like make that video, which is pretty insane. And not only is it gonna require you to have a lot of hard drive space whenever you're going for like a camera that has better specs and bigger file sizes and all that, but in the a7S III, you also need to invest in new memory cards to be able to shoot in 4K 120. And in this case, you have the CF Express Type A memory card. Let's see, there you go which are entirely new, I think. I haven't seen them on any website before, and I think that Sony actually dropped these at the same time with the camera. I don't know, but I'm gonna have to investigate that when I get my own camera so that we can see if these are new or if these are, uh, these are, yeah. Do you see that? It says, not for sale 
on the memory card. And even though I don't know the price of one of these just yet, I'm thinking that they will be way more expensive than a regular SD card because the other CF Express cards around 128 gigabytes is gonna cost you around four to 500 bucks depending on what kind of brand that you're getting. So depending on where you are in your career, that's something that you have to keep in mind whenever you're going out and buying a new camera. Another thing that I wanna talk about is going to be the 12 megapixel sensor that you have in the A7S III. So if we're talking about a hybrid camera that can do really good photos and really good videos, I wouldn't actually say that this is going to be the one that is going to be the best for that. In that case, I'd actually recommend something like the Canon EOS R5 or the A7R4 or the A7 III because we don't have an A7 IV yet. On the A7 III, you do not have the flip out screen because you still have the old like angling, tilting screen. I don't know what you call these, like uh, tilt, tilt screen. We're going to call it that. And this is great to have whenever you're shooting photos like this because then you kind of have it like that. But as soon as you want to shoot like really low stuff, then you're going to be like, oh, 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 oh. So it's going to like strain your back, strain your neck. And when you have a fully articulating screen like you have on the A7S, that's going to make it so much easier to shoot photos and videos vertically, vert vertically, vertically than with the Sony a7 III. And when you're vlogging, like that is given. Being able to see yourself and just flip it out, record yourself, see the framing, being able to point at stuff in the frame is such a game changer if you've been a Sony shooter for a long time. And if you're just entering into the Sony system and your main focus is like vlogging and you want to have a full frame camera that is going to be really good for video, then the a7S III is definitely going to be the better one. So to sum this video up, like, if you want to have the best hybrid camera that is going to be the best camera for both photos and videos, I would not like recommend the A7S III because I think that the photo side of it isn't as strong as the A7 III. However, when it comes to video, this is unbeatable by anything that Sony currently has in their lineup. And it produces one really good image when you're shooting in 4K and the low light performance is just insane, the dynamic range and being able to have the 16 bit raw externally is basically making this turn into like a cinema camera that you can use to shoot real movies with. Because like 16 bit color space, 60 frames per second, 4K raw in a camera that is this size is a lot. And the 873 has always been the jack of all trades, but the master of none. But this is a master of video, and the A7R4 is the master of photo, and I'm really eager to see what Sony will do with the A7 IV, but I don't know when that will drop. But until then, I'm gonna say that the A7 III still is worth it in 2020, and it's definitely still the jack of all trades but the master of none. So again, if you haven't seen my video on the Sony a7S III where I talk about the a7S III hands-on first impression and all that, then check out this video that is gonna be somewhere here. And I will say thank you so much for watching. Really hope that you enjoyed this video and my thoughts on the cameras. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, hey, email, always good to have. If you haven't subscribed, that would be highly appreciated because I would love to see you in the next video. So, uh, oh, have a good one and take care. Peter from Sweden is going back to his vacation because when you're watching this, I'm actually already on vacation. But I, if I know myself correctly, I'm going to be like a hawk in the comment section like, hey, another email. Always good. Okay, I got to have a, have a look on what that was. Take care, see you after the vacation is over. Bye-bye.